socializing, okay? Okay, I'm going to go over some announcements. So, first up on the board up here is our weekly schedule. Um, that's going to be changing in the next couple weeks because as, uh, well, I guess the next week or so, uh, as September hits, all our programs will be back on, uh, up and running, and when September comes around, it's our anniversary. So on September 10th, this will be our 10 year anniversary. So we're going to have a huge celebration, uh, free gifts for everybody, cars, you know, there's draws, there's all that stuff, right? So make sure you uh, come out to that, we're going to have a big huge celebration. And uh, in the evening at uh, Hope for Today on that same day, we are going to have a baptism. So make sure you come out to that and celebrate the people that are being baptized. Right? Um, and I'm sure there will be more details about the anniversary as it comes up. And if you want to be baptized, make sure you talk to Pastor Brian and uh, he'll get you on the list to be baptized. Uh, also, starting in uh, September on the 10th, is our uh, youth Sunday school will be starting back up. They took a little break for the summer, and um, it'll be starting back up with uh, uh, Pastor Dwayne. He's our new youth pastor, so um, I don't know what happened. And this actually brings me to a good point. See how the board isn't working? We need help in the IT department, okay? In the technical department. So if you are able to uh, maybe run the soundboard or put the stuff up on the screen, to get the stuff on the screen, all it takes is a mouse click. So if you can do this, let's do this. Can everybody do it? Perfect. You already have the pre-qualifications to sign up for the sound. So. If you're interested in that, if you feel that God's leading you to do that, come talk to me after the service. That's for either sound or to do the projection, okay? And back to where, where was I? Oh, yeah. They skipped ahead on me. Um, so there's a Bible study, uh, and it's called uh, Walking, uh, Walking with Jesus, Learning to Walk as Followers of Jesus. It's a, a New Believers... Bible study. So, if you guys remember, last year we used to do the uh, we used to do Christianity Explored. This is kind of like that. It's just a different uh, a different version. So, it's uh, excellent for anybody that has questions or is new in their faith, or anybody that's old in their faith. There's always stuff that we can learn, right? And grief share will be starting up, and also this is that this week Monday uh, at three. 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. and Friday at 3 p.m. Okay? It's on the thing there. So that's going to be a senior's boat cruise. Okay? So if you are a senior, if you are senior, whatever that is, 60? 65 and older. So who's 65 and older in here? Yeah, let's celebrate them, okay? They're, they're the wisdom of our church, right? So they get to go on a special... Boat cruise, okay? Out on Lake Simcoe, it's gonna be, it's it's not gonna be three hours. Don't worry about that, okay? That's it, that's, see, I got you guys, I got you back. You know, all the young kids, you're like, why wouldn't you go for a three hour cruise? But all you old people, you can explain that to somebody younger. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, so if you're interested in that, if you're interested in a boat cruise, talk to Pastor Jeff at the back. Okay, it's tomorrow and this Friday. Got it? And also there's a men's retreat coming up on September the 22nd and the 24th, or 22nd to the 24th. And if you're interested in that, talk to Paul G. He's also at the back. So seniors cruise is Jeff in this corner, and men's retreat is Paul in that corner. Okay? Is that clear? If anybody has any questions or just wants to yell at me for talking too long, you can do that after the service as well, okay? And Alicia's going to come up and do an announcement. Hey, good morning, everyone. Morning. Okay, so as you guys know, it's the end of August, so it's the beginning of September next Sunday. 
So we have a new sign-up sheet if you would like to sign up for someone to give you a call for prayer for needs. There's also our new prayer lists are out that we've been collecting for the month of August. So if anyone would like one to take home for when you're doing your daily devotional or your Bible reading, you have people on here to pray for, okay? Also, the, the cards to fill out for your prayer requests are located in the backs of your seat. And there's a box at the back by Jeff that you can just hand it to him or you can hand him right to me. Thanks. Let's stand. Good morning, Hope, for today. Good morning. Oh, thanks for that. <laughs> Just listening to all those announcements, we are really blessed, aren't we? All of these amazing things that God is doing and, and happening and opportunities to grow in our faith together and in our relationships with one another. Um, and it is beautiful to see. Um, I'd like to start this morning with John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. That never gets old, does it? It shouldn't anyway. <laughs> so this morning we have opportunity to, to focus all our attention on Jesus and what he has done and what he continues to do. So let's, let's sing it out to him this morning and um, worship him with all we've got. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your plan of salvation. Thank you that your heart is for us, Lord. It is not your will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, God, for coming not to condemn us, Lord God, but to save us through your death and resurrection. We are so thankful, Lord. Thank you for loving us so much, for your unconditional love, for your mercy and your grace. Would you speak to our hearts this morning? Would you draw us close? Would you help us to set aside all the distractions and the busyness of our minds and focus on you, Lord God? We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, sing it out. How good of God.
sing hallelujah, it means praise the Lord. So when we sing forever all my days, hallelujah, we're saying forever all my days, I will praise you, Lord. God, I love to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision. Sing it out. To see things I can do. Oh, God.
just you are righteous in all you do you are set apart Lord God and we give you all the praise and all the glory this morning would you touch our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit would you show us Lord where there are places in our hearts that we need to repent Lord God would you give us your attitude would you give us your eyes Lord Jesus that we would see things the way you see them Lord God that our hearts would ache for what makes your heart ache and Lord Jesus, that you would just set our hearts ablaze for you, that we would love you more than anything else in this whole world. Thank you, Jesus. We need you, and we thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Not just a story It's a living, breathing, walking testimony Of a God so good He made His home in glory For the world He loved For the world that He so loved hey, It's not just a story
good stuff. Now, kids can stay because Melody's going to do a little uh, presentation for Kids Camp. Pastor Melody. <laughs>
Yesterday was your 60th anniversary party. That's so cool. Wow. That's really something. So, did you get a medal or something there, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Went up the CN Tower. It's because she wanted to push you off, but it didn't work out. Oh, man. That's great. It's good to see you all. Um, the kids thing kind of threw me off. That's cool. A lot of good stuff happened there. It was, a, it was a noisy week. You should have come in here. Then you'd know what I'm talking about when I go for my wife's family Christmas. Um, the, um, the, uh, we were singing some beautiful songs here this morning. I, I, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Not that we don't usually, but they just, I love singing about God's holiness. I just, I think that's, if we forget that God is holy, we start to treat him like one of us. And it's a terrible thing. He's so much more than we are. Well, um, um, so where am I in the program? Oh, we have a, a men's uh, a camp thing happening. Go ahead, Paul. On September 22nd to 24th is the men's retreat. It's on Skeleton Lake. It's Salvation Army Camp. It's being presented by Reverend Dr. James Pedler. It's called Ascent. There will be there's posters at the foyer and downstairs near the washrooms for registration. We need to register by September 8th or when it fills up. So it is best to do so as soon as possible. We have about uh, a dozen men already signed up from this church alone. So you can imagine. 
Church and other churches are also going to be signing up. Um, come and see me if you have any questions. We're going to be setting up carpools as well as um, the money is, is taken either in the registration form or given to me, but I'll, I'll clarify that uh, after service. Any questions, come and see me. Okay. If you feel you can't afford to go on this financially, please see Paul. He's willing to pay for you. <laughs> we don't let Paul up to the front because he'd start preaching, so we have to keep him in the back there. Okay, that's good. Thank you, Paul. Oh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. We thank you that we are so blessed here in Ontario. As we look around the world, even our country, we look around and see all the people. We have friends from here that have moved out to uh, BC, uh, Troy and, and, uh, and his wife and family, the Martins, and, um, and they've had to be evacuated from their home. And Sue Ho is out there and she's ministering for you in, in uh, Kelowna and, and uh, even uh, protecting Derek and May Lee while they were out there last week. We, Man, we have so much to be grateful for in this province. We are so thankful to you, God. We pray for those families out there that are being displaced because of the fires, even uh, fires everywhere else in Canada too, Lord, and down in California and all around the world. Floods, fires, uh, all kinds of crazy things going on. And, and you know, this, these people can blame whatever they want to blame. But, Lord, we know you're in charge. You allow things to happen. We're not blaming you. We're not blaming you. But, Father, we're praying now for, for, for protection. We're praying for peace in everybody's hearts and comfort. God, there's so much we don't understand about this life. But we trust you because we don't have anywhere else to turn. You're the only one who's faithful and true. So, Lord, please, in Jesus' name, protect these people. And, Father, uh, we pray for all of those in this community, especially, that are suffering from addiction. And, God, our, our hearts are broken. It's family members. It's, it's friends. It's people in our community. And, God, it's such a problem. Father, we pray for the children of these families. We pray in Jesus' name, protect them. Oh, God, protect them. And we pray, Father, for these that are addicted. Oh, God, it's, it's such a difficult thing. It's such a, people, if we're not addicted to something, we don't understand. But, Father, addiction is so hard. In Jesus' name we pray. God, give them strength. Give them courage. Give them boldness that they would take this on, Lord. And through the power of Jesus Christ, they would break those chains. Thank you so much, Lord. We pray for the families of, of people that uh, have lost a loved one just recently even to, to overdoses, to, to problems connected with drug usage and alcohol. We pray in Jesus' name, give them peace, give them comfort, Lord. Give them strength. Thank you so much. You're, you're such a good God. You love us so much. You care for every little thing in our life. God, we pray for those in this congregation right now that are hurting physically. We pray in Jesus' name for healing. We know that you're the healer. You, you are the healer. And so we ask you to heal. Father, for those that are struggling financially, we pray in Jesus' name that you would bless them. You, you know their needs, and we pray that those needs would be met. And Father, those who are looking for employment, we pray that you'd give them peace, that you would give them Give them courage to go out there. There's, there's, there's a, a lot of jobs available, and, and, and we just pray that they would be able to find one that would suit them and that would work well for their family. Whatever it is, Lord, everybody has needs. Everybody in this place has needs right now. And we pray in Jesus' name that we would find the answer to those needs in you. And we thank you so much. Be with us now as we look into your word. Speak to us through the power of your Holy Spirit. Guide us and lead us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Wow. So um, we've been uh, working through Genesis chapter 35. Do people change? There's a good question. 
Do people change? Genesis 35. This is an interesting passage. We read it last week. We're going to read it again, but we're going to look at one particular facet of this passage. Genesis 35, 1 to 29. God said to Jacob, Arise and go to Bethel and dwell there. Make an altar there to the God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. God appeared. God appeared to Jacob in, in this place. And, and, and God spoke to Jacob. And Jacob's life was changed. It was changed. But then we saw Jacob leave Bethel. He, he left the house of God. He, that place that he called the house of God. For he met with God there. He left there. And we see him immediately go back into planning and scheming. It's, it's something that we all do. We, we, we all have a meeting with God. And we say, God, you know, we're... We're going we're gonna to live for you. We're going to trust you. And then it's not too long after we find ourselves back trusting ourselves instead of trusting God. And, and so Jacob said to his household and to all that were... This, is, this shows you that there was change. He said to his family, put away the foreign gods that are among you. Purify yourselves and change your garments. Get rid of everything that represents those foreign gods. We want, we're going to change because I've met with God. Again, this is what we do. I've seen people do this. They're like, they're like, you know what? I had this, I had this incredible meeting with God, and and we're changing. We're gonna, we're no longer gonna do this. And then it's a few months later. I see them doing this, and I say, what happened? It, it doesn't take long. We 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 just we're drawn back into things the world. We allow ourselves to get sucked back into it. It's it's hard. It's hard to live as an alien. <laughs> you know, people, uh, you know, they think of those green people or purple people and, and purple people eaters. And, and, and they, they, they think of, that's what I see myself as. And, and I don't mind when people look at me funny because I, I, want, I want people to know I'm different. And, and, and when they know I'm different and they treat me as though I'm different, that's good because it reminds me who I am. If they treated me the same as everybody else, I'd be going, man, they must not see a difference in me. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I know I'm a little bit more extreme than most of you, but... <laughs> get back on the notes here. <laughs> So let us arise and go to the house of God, Bethel, so that I may make there an altar to the God who answers me in the day of my distress and has been with me wherever I go. Even though Jacob has turned his back on God and trusted himself and his plans, he still, he, he knows that God answers his prayers. He knows that God's with him wherever he goes. God is so good to us. He won't let us, he won't let us wander away without him. But we can slide back into the things of this world, but God's right there. God is chasing us down. He's the hound of heaven. He won't let us go. We might reject him. We might turn our backs on him. But when the time comes for us to turn back to him, he's right there. That's fantastic. He promises never to leave us alone. So they gave to Jacob all their foreign gods that they had. Do you believe this? This man of God, Jacob, is, has allowed his family to have to collect their own foreign gods. They've got all these little idols and little shrines. I went to a friend of mine to his house. He's, he's from Guyana. And, and he's, he's, he's a born-again follower of Jesus Christ. He loves the Lord with all his heart. Well, his wife doesn't. She's Hindu. And, and all around the house, he's showing me, he takes me around the house, and, and there's these shrines, these little, and, and, you know, rice offerings and whatever, and, and these little gods. I don't know if you know anything about Hinduism, but, you know, Hindus, everything's a god. 34,000 proverbial gods. And, and, and there's all these, these weird-looking things all over the house, and he says, how do I live like this? Here's a guy who wants to follow Jesus. And... Uh, Finally, she left. She didn't even turn to God. She, she, she finally left him. She says, you're crazy. And, and she left. She took all her gods and left. So you want to say he's in a better place, but 
He doesn't have his wife and his children. So, so anyway, the, it, it's sad. And, and here's Jacob. He walks around the house and this, this, he opens this kid's bedroom door. And in there he's got his little gods and shrines. This kid's got... And, and, and Jacob doesn't say anything. Jacob doesn't say anything. It, there's, uh, you can ask my kids. I, I'm, 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 I'm a, a dad that, that, that still lives by that, you know, if you want to live in my home, you're welcome. But these are the rules. It's the way it goes. And, and so my son, if my son set up some shrine in his bedroom, I'd, I'd burn down his bedroom. <laughs> He's not doing that in my house. If you want to have your shrine, that's fine. Get out of my house. And I, I know dads, some dads are saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but the mothers are going, no, no, if we send them out, they could get worse. And, you know, that, these kind of things. We need call and get put in a wheelchair. Are you okay, man? Okay, okay. I keep flashing over there. It's like, what? what's going on? Now I don't know where I am. So... Don't do that to me, you nut. You're weird. Your pants are weird. Verse 4. Oh, thank you. So they gave to Jacob all the foreign gods they had and the rings that were in their earrings. It's not wrong. Don't you don't go home and beat up your kids about having earrings, okay? It's not wrong to have earrings. Their earrings were part of the worship to their gods. Okay, that's why they gave up their earrings. Jacob hid them under the turban tree that was near Shechem. And as they journeyed, a terror from... So after they did this, after they turned to God, the God, the true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when they turned to the true God, as they journeyed, a terror from God fell upon the cities that were around them so that they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. God put terror on those cities to protect Jacob and his family while they traveled. Jacob and his family have just turned back to God, and God is demonstrating his protection of the family. If you know from previous chapters, I, I, I wish you, you could have been here for all the series here, but, but Jacob's two sons, Simeon and Levi, their, do, their sister got raped. By the local uh, a city close by. And so these boys schemed and they scammed. And they went in. These two boys. They, beautiful plan. You got to read it. And they go into the city. After they've, they've, they've uh, weakened all the men. And they kill them all. And they take all the women. And, and all the plunder. And they, they take. So now they come home and they say. Look what we did dad. We, we uh, avenged our sister. And he goes, that's wonderful. Now every town around us is going to try to kill us. And so, and so now he's worried about them killed. Well, now they're journeying, and God's put this terror on all these people that want to kill them, and they won't attack them. Fantastic. And Jacob came to Luz, that's Bethel, which is the land of Canaan. That's the promised land. Remember, we're going to read about that later when, when Israel takes that whole land. He and all the people who were with him. And there they built an altar and they called the place El Bethel. Because there God had revealed himself to, uh, to, to Jacob when he fled from his brother. And Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died. And she was buried under an oak tree below Bethel. So he called the name of that Elon Bekath. God appeared to Jacob again. And when he came to Badan Ram... And blessed him. It sounds like a whole bunch of Nazareth songs, but that's not what's going on here. So, and, and God said to him, your name is Jacob. No longer shall your name be called uh, Jacob. It shall be called Israel. God had already done this before, prior, at the, at the river of Jabbok. Uh, God had, 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 had uh, met with Jacob, and he had changed his name from Jacob to Israel. But now God's reminding him, now that... Now that Jacob has come back to the Lord, he's going, oh, by the way, don't forget, I changed your name from Jacob to Israel. Now live like that. And so here's God appeared to Jacob again, gave him that name again, so he called his name Israel. Number 11. And God said to him, I am El Shaddai. I'm God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall come from you. Kings shall come from your body. 
And the land that I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I'll give it to you. And I will give the land to your offspring after you. And that's the promised land. That's what we're taught Canaan is going to become their land. Then God went up from him in the place where he had spoken with him. And Jacob set up a pillar and he did all this kind of uh, uh, legalistic stuff that we don't do now. But as, as Israel, they did these offerings. So Jacob called the name of the place where God had spoken to him, Bethel. Again, they're just reiterating. He calls it the house of God because every time he goes there, he meets with God. But he also just previously said, God is with me wherever I go. So please don't think that God dwells in a building someplace. God dwells with us. Oh, I'm working up a sweat. You guys okay? Okay. Um, and then it says, then they journeyed from Bethel, and when they were still some distance away from Ephrath, which is, uh, which is Bethlehem, Rachel went into labor, and she had hard labor. And when her labor was at its hardest, the midwife said to her, do not fear, for you have another son. And as her soul was departing, she was dying during her labor. She called his name Ben-Oni. But his father called him Benjamin. Ben-Oni means son of sorrow. And, and the dad said, that's not really a good name for our kid. Here's son of sorrow, dinner time. So he changed his name to Benjamin, which is son of my right hand. It's like, you know, you're my best son kind of deal. So Rachel died and she was buried uh, on the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. And Jacob set up a pillar over her tomb. It's the pillar of Rachel's tomb, which is there to, to today. When this was written, it was there till that day. Israel journeyed on, pitched her tent beyond the Tower of Eder. While Israel lived in that land, Reuben went and lay with Belai, his father's concubine. A concubine is, um, it's wrong. <laughs> it's, it's his mistress. It's, it's, uh, he has a, a bunch of women that belong to him, but it's wrong. And it's been wrong since the beginning of the Bible. Don't say, well, it's okay. Jacob had them. Therefore, it's okay for me to have them. But I was talking. I couldn't believe it. I was talking to a guy last week. And he says to me, he says, um, well, you know, I've got my wife and I've got my mistress. And I said, I said, why do you have a mistress? And he said, well, it's okay to have more than one woman. He says, all the guys in the Old Testament had more than one woman. I said, yeah, they were all sinners. They're the same as us. We're all sinners. But that doesn't make it right. That doesn't make it right. David killed a man. David was a man after God's own heart. And he killed a man. So is it okay for us to kill people? I guess so. No, absolutely not. So, so be careful. Don't, take, don't look at someone's life in the Old Testament and go, well, that guy did it. So, you know, Abraham lied four times. So it's okay to lie. No, God says it's not right to lie. What God says is what counts. Are you, are you having an affair? Is that why you're leaving? <laughs> okay, now two things can happen with Ramses. Either he never comes back again, or, or he never gets out of his seat again. Right? <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Oh my goodness. The man has lost his mind. Don't get up when I'm in the middle of a thought. What verse am I on, Paul? 22. 22. Well, <laughs> I read that one, man. 23. The sons of Leah... Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, Joseph, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Zilloth, Gad, and Asher. These, these are all the kids of Jacob. They're all two different women, but they're all the kids of Jacob. And those 12 children are what each tribe of Israel is called. So there's the, the tribe of Dan, the tribe of Asher, Zebulon, Issachar. So the sons of Zilpha... Leah's servant, Gad, and these are the sons of Jacob who were born in... Okay, and Jacob came to his father Isaac at Mamre, or Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had sojourned. And now the days of Isaac were 180. The Isaac breathed his last breath. He died. He was gathered together with his people. That's the end of Isaac. And Isaac is the father of Jacob. Jacob and Esau show up and they bury their dad. Bada bing. Thank you. 
So the question is, do people change? Do people change? Now we've seen Jacob four times now in the story of Jacob. Jacob has met with God. He's met with God. There's no question. He doesn't have a question that he met with God. He knows he met with God. One time it was in a dream. One time God spoke to him. One time God wrestled with him. And, and, and now he spoke to him again at Bethel. Four times he's had an encounter with God. Each time we see Jacob change a little bit. A little bit. But then he goes back. It seems like he, like as soon as the first time he went, he, he started fighting with Esau again. Like he goes back to his old life. He reverts back. All of us here who have met with God, if you're born again, you've met with God. Okay, If you're a follower of Jesus, you've met with God. And you say, well, I didn't hear his Yeah, you heard his voice. He called you. He drew you. You, you, you felt convicted. This is what God does. So, so God, God will, will, make you feel, will make you know that you are a sinner. If you can't come to the place where you can say, I'm a sinner, then you can never know God. That's important because a lot of people have a lot of pride and they'll say, I'm not a sinner. So what is a sinner? A sinner is someone who rejects Jesus Christ. Well, who hasn't rejected Jesus Christ? I grew up my whole life till I was 29 years old before I received Jesus, before I said, I'm a sinner. But for 29 years, I rejected him because I didn't walk with him. I didn't pay attention to him. If we reject God, we are a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned. All have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. If you, if you happen to come from a Roman Catholic background, that you, you believe that Mary is without sin. That's why we call it immaculate conception. That's not true. That's a lie from hell. Mary was a human being just like us. She's 100% human. And, and when the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory, that includes Mary. So don't say, well, the Bible's not really true on that. Yes, it is. Absolutely true. Everybody has sinned. The only, the only human being who walked on this planet without sin, and the Bible says so, was Jesus Christ. God came to earth and became 100% human and walked on this earth for 33 and a half years. He was tempted in every way that we are, but he did not sin. It says he was without sin. So we're all sinners. We have to come to a place where we say, I am a sinner. And once you do that, then you can come to Jesus Christ and ask him for forgiveness. He'll forgive you and you become a follower of Jesus Christ. When we become followers of Jesus Christ, like Jacob, when he became a follower of God, he turned. You could see some turn. Like in this last passage, they gave up all their, all their idols. They, they, they gave them all up. They took, out all their, they took off their dirty clothes, the, the garments. He's, just, he's not really talking about their literal clothes. He's talking about what they wore, what they wore in their heart, what they wore in their life. And they took that and they threw it all in a pile, and that was the end of that. Now they've turned to God. When we do that, have we changed? Yes, absolutely we've changed. Bible says when we do that, we become brand new creations in Christ Jesus. There's a change. I'm no longer the same. I'm new. But I have to allow the Holy Spirit of God. See, when, when I become a follower of, of Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes and lives within me. Isn't that beautiful? God comes and lives with me. That's why he says, I'll never leave you all. As long as you're following Jesus, God is living in you. You are the temple of the living God. Amen. That's a beautiful promise. And, and, and so when God comes to live in me, I change. There has to be a radical change. I can't still be the guy I was because then I'd have God living in me and I'd be, I'd be, I'd be sinning. I'd be doing the things I was doing before and, and God's going like, what are you making me do here? Now, remember, I'm, I'm living in you. I want to transform you. Look what the Bible says. It says in, in, um, uh, in uh, Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed 
Romans 12, 2. Yes. Okay. Starting in that Genesis chapter. I broke it? Yeah. Genesis 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You can't conform to the pattern of this world anymore. When you come to Jesus Christ, you're now following God. You're walking in His ways, not in the ways of the world. What does that look like? Well, let's take the example that you all know, because I've seen you all at McDonald's. And you go up to the counter... And of course the girl at McDonald's gives you the wrong order. Of course she does. And some of you are flipping out. All you Karens out there and you Kevins. If your name really is Karen, I'm sorry about that. I didn't make that up. But, but, but people are flipping out at the counter. This little 12-year-old behind the counter here. Tell, you forgot my ketchup. What's wrong with you? That's not transformation. Now you're conforming to the pattern of this world. Those are angry people. We're not angry people. We're not angry people. Do you understand? We are loving people. We are loving people. When you, listen, when you watch the news, don't get confused. Don't get confused. When you watch the news and you see some people down in the south burning Koran, Burning them on the front lawn of their church. Those are not Christians. Those are not followers of Jesus Christ. Don't get confused. Yeah, they go to a church. That means nothing. A person who's a follower of Jesus Christ has been radically transformed. We're filled with the love of God. God is living in us. If we can't love our neighbors, if we can't love those around us, we're not followers of Jesus Christ. Oh, but pastor, you should have seen what that person did to me yesterday. They cut me off. Oh, ha, ha. So I followed them home and took a baseball bat and beat their windshield out of their car. Well, that's what Jesus would have done. Don't. Don't. That is the pattern of the world. For centuries, people have done stuff in the name of Christ that is totally not to be done. When, when you talk to, if I talk to a Muslim, and if I'm, if I'm crazy enough to say that I'm a Christian, they don't want to talk to me. They want to kill me. Do you know why? Because people who used to call themselves Christians made campaigns that they called crusades, and they, their whole idea was to kill Muslims. That was their whole idea. Oh, by the way, on their way across Europe to get to Israel to kill the Muslims, they raped women and they killed people along the way to practice. Boy, that sounds like something Jesus would do, isn't it? The world is filled with people who call themselves Christians. I try not to use that word because it upsets my heart. Christian is a Greek word meaning follower of Jesus. Just say you're a follower of Jesus Set yourself apart from these Christians. It's sad. When you're at McDonald's and you see some guy with a shirt, I love Jesus, and he's yelling and swearing at that little 12-year-old behind the counter. Take him aside and slap him across the face. <laughs> yeah, I know you're laughing, but you also know it's true. It's true. I once read a joke, and I wish I could remember it, but you might have seen it, but some lady got pulled over in her car, and, and, and on the back of her car, she had all these bumper stickers. You know, I love Jesus, honk if you love Jesus. You know, the, the usual, and, and, that, and that Captain Highliner fish. She got pulled over, and, and, and the policeman's talking to her, and she's like, ah, oh, get out of here. And, and, and then he says, well... I guess I'm going to have to charge you for having a stolen car because this can't possibly be your car. <laughs> it's the way, listen, when you're a follower of Jesus Christ, people should be able to say, look at that guy. He's weird, man. He must be a follower of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what you do to him. He still loves you. He forgives you all the time. He's so nice to people. How many here like being nice? 
Yeah, yeah, you did that. You bunch of liars. <laughs> Listen. Being nice is actually fun. Make it a game. Make it try say to yourself, I'm gonna be nice today. And try and do it. It's hard to be nice, because you know why? People are nuts, right? I get it. I get it. It's frustrating. But you know what? Look at look at our life. Look at look at what we did to Jesus Christ. We hung him on a cross. Anybody here a murderer? I am. I murdered Jesus Christ. He died because of my sin. He died because of my sin. That's what I did to him. Some lady forgets to put ketchup on my burger. I'm going to get mad at her. He didn't get mad at me. He hung on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them. That's how you have to look at things. You can't look at things like it's, it's not fair. It's not, don't, don't do that. Look at yourself in Jesus Christ and say, what should I do? How can I show God's love to these people? Why is it important to show God's love? It's God's kindness that leads to repentance. That's what the Bible says. When I show kindness to people, I make sure they know, this is, listen lady, this isn't me. I'm really not a kind guy. But because Christ lives in me, I can be kind. And she sees God's kindness, and it'll lead her to repentance. You get it? Man, it's so exciting, really. Transformation is a wonderful thing. It's an, it's an inward spiritual transformation that will show itself in outward actions. When I do the things I do, people hear, you know, oh, you're doing all those moving jobs. You're a pastor. You shouldn't be helping people move. I love helping people move. And they go, hey, old man. That's how they talk to me. Why are you carrying that armoire? Because I can. No, no. They say, why are you helping? Like, why don't you just send young people? Or why? Well, because I want to show God's kindness. I want to show, because I want to see how it leads you to repentance. I love being kind. I love, my wife gets mad at me. She does. She's angry woman. <laughs> Whoa. So. My wife is a, is a wonderful woman, but she, she has to remind me sometimes. Like, I, I let people walk all over me, and, and, and I do things that, that are ridiculous. And, and, and she reminds me, you know, like, you're, you're going to die. And I go, yes. <laughs> um. But I, I try to be nice and I try to smile all the time. I try to make her laugh. It's my biggest adventure in life. <laughs> oh, it worked. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like the puppet David. Oh, so. <laughs> anyway, um, it's this, so, so when Jacob meets with God, he gets a little bit transformed each time. And you'll see in the next few chapters, uh, Jacob meets with God again, and, it, and he's transformed even more. And, and I know that some of us, are, we're all at different stages, and some of us are brand new to following Jesus Christ. And you're going to see, you're going to see your life getting trained. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Let the Holy Spirit transform you. He wants to renew your mind. He wants to make it so that when, when you... When you fall into a situation, you don't react the way that you've always reacted. He wants you to react differently. You're going to start reacting in God's love. It's going to be a beautiful thing. You're going to love it. Transformation is a great thing. Once we were lost, now we're found. It's a different life. Once you were dead in your sin and your trespasses, now you're alive in Christ Jesus. It's a different life. You've died to self and you're alive to Christ. It's beautiful. It really is. You mean I don't have to be the grumpy person I used to be? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. God will change that. He'll fill you with his love. And his love will spill out. And you won't be like the people you see on TV. TV loves to pick on those people. They call them fundamental Christians. I don't even know what that means. 
I'm not a fundamental Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. People say, what denomination are you? I say, we're not a denomination. There's no denomination here. We're just followers of the Bible. We're called Biblicists. I made that up. <laughs> Biblicists. Don't put yourself in the bracket of everyone else who calls themselves a follower of Jesus and is a hypocrite. If you are a hypocrite, that's fine. Call yourself a Christian, please. But if you're not a hypocrite, if you want to be a follower of Jesus, you're going to live a transformed life. Call yourself a follower of Jesus Christ. And let the Holy Spirit transform you. Y'all with me? Yes. We'll find out in the weeks to come. Don't go to McDonald's. I'm going to be camped out there watching. We're going to, we're going to celebrate our communion. Don't open these. Don't open these yet. There's some very important rules here. If you open the top first and then you flip it upside down to take out the bread, you will get covered in juice. So you want, you want to open the bottom first. But don't do it now. Don't do it yet. I want you to, I want you to understand what it is we're doing. This is, this, there's no magic going on here. There's nothing weird. There's nothing weird at all. Depends what background you come from. This, this is called the Eucharist, the Thanksgiving. It's called the Communion. It's called the Lord's Supper. It's called the Lord's Table. Got all kinds of names. But it comes from the Bible. When Jesus met with the disciples just prior to, uh, to getting crucified, he met with them and he said, Listen, whenever you eat and drink together, I want you to remember what I did for you. And he says, When you eat this unleavened bread, this cracker, when you eat that, think of my body that was given up for you. When I hung on that cross, think of my body that was given up for you. When you drink this juice, think of my blood that was poured out for you. Remember that. This is what I did for you. This is how much I love you. Isn't that amazing? I always remember some, when I was in Sunday school and some, somebody said, how much, does, how much does Jesus love you? And the guy said, this much. Hanging on a cross, eh? That much. Who would do that for you? So when you do this, we're not just having a little snack. We're remembering what Jesus did for us. We were all dead in our sin. Dead in our sin. And Christ made us alive through his life. He died on the cross. He took our sin upon himself. And he gave us his righteousness. That's why I'm getting into heaven. That's why I'm going to be in heaven. God's going to see me and he's going to go, hey, who are you? And then he's going to look and go, oh, wait a second. I see the righteousness of Christ. Jesus gave you his righteousness. You accepted it. Come on in. It's nothing I did. I can't be good enough. Trust me. I can't be good enough to get into heaven. There's nothing I can do. I can't pay enough money. I can't come to church enough. I can't read my Bible enough. I can't pray enough. There's nothing I can do to get me into heaven. But Jesus paid for me. He bought me a ticket. He bought me a ticket. Do you all know that song? There's a song. It's an old gospel song. It was remade by, uh, by Jeff Beck and Rod Stewart. People get ready. Do you know that song? People get ready. There's a, there's a train a coming. Don't need no baggage. You just get on board. All you, need is, all you need is love. You hear the diesels humming. All you need is love. That's what the Beatles said too. You know what love is? The Bible says God is love. That's all you need. All you need is God. Isn't that beautiful? What's free in this life? Salvation. That's it. Everything else costs. You can open your bread now. Cracker. Okay? Once you got your cracker, think about this. This represents the body of Jesus Christ. It does not become the body of Jesus Christ. It represents the body. It's a symbol. It represents the body of Jesus Christ. And when we eat this, we remember what Christ did for us on the cross when he gave up his life. Okay? Let's do that together. Then you can open the juice. It's just juice. There's no alcohol in this because most of us are ex-alcoholics. 
don't want to go there again. Let's drink that and remember Christ's blood that was poured out for us. Everybody stand and give him thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Wonderful Savior. Glorious Lord. Let's sing Rock of Our Salvation.
and there's coffee and tea and lots of great time downstairs to fellowship, okay? God bless you guys.